This is Kelly Hill, technology reporter for RCR Wireless News. I'm here today with Maddie Oxella, who is VP of Analytics and Technology with CompTEL. Welcome, Maddie. Thank you. Nice to be here. Great. Um, I wanted. To, we're going to be talking about uh, big data analytics and and the Internet of Things today. And I'm wondering if maybe you can just start us off with an overview of what CompTEL does, so that we understand um, the company's role in the ecosystem and kind of how you've come um, to the perspective on on big data and IoT uh, that you have. Uh, thank you. Sure. So uh, CompTEL, we're essentially a software vendor for mobile operators or service providers in general, so also other than mobile. Uh, we've been doing this since 1986, starting with mediation as kind of the foundation block of, of our portfolio. So essentially we've been collecting a lot of data from a lot of different sources for quite a while now. And that's kind of, I think the number is about 20% of all the mobile calls get, the kind of city I get mediated by computer software, so it's a kind of good experience in that market. Of course, grown since then to do things like fulfillment of services, another kind of big area of our, our business. And kind of where I come in is in the analytics part. So it's already been oh, almost three years, I think, since Comptel acquired Extract, uh, where we basically built in, brought in the predictive analytics capabilities. So my background is from, from the Extract acquisition, and we were essentially for about 10 years before that really doing production grade commercial analytics solutions. So. I think right now CompTEL is really combining all of these very good traits in having a really good foundation in the telco space, understanding the data and being able to process large amounts of data and combining machine learning, predictive analytics, real-time processing, that combination, which I think is, is kind of, I think it's a good mix in my opinion. Okay, great. Uh, so let's jump right into into the Internet of Things. Um, and I'm wondering, uh, you know, what what impact does CompTEL see the Internet of Things having on you know on data collection, on business intelligence, um, you know, on big data in general? Yeah, I think personally, the Internet of Things is is really one of my personal interest areas, and and really, of course, it's about being able to well have a lot more information available for decision making. So the Internet of Things is about well connected, being connected, all these measurements that we get, whether that be from a, a plant or smart metering stations in your utility networks, all of that information now being made available, most commonly actually through mobile networks or different kind of internet networks, and being able to utilize that information for making smarter decisions. So I think it's one of the areas where big data really can be very useful, because you also have very concrete applications like essentially detecting faults in networks, finding kind of proactive management services, even understanding how things are working, be able, able to react in real time to problems that occur. That's one of the kind of really good application areas of also predictive modeling and machine learning in the context of big data. Okay, and I think probably we should also expect that the, the endpoints um, you know, will also be increasing with with Internet of Things. That there will simply be more. You know, you mentioned a few, um, but more types of data, more endpoints. Um, you know, more data volume um, on top of what we're already seeing. Um, you know, increasing in networks. Um, so I'm wondering if you can maybe talk about some of the ways to to handle the increasing amount of data, um, particularly as we head into this this Internet of Things world. Yeah, I think it's always a Fascinating topic because depending on kind of whose viewpoint you look at it, some see it as more of a kind of a data collection issue. So you have a lot of sources you mentioned. Uh, luckily, when we're talking about Internet of Things, we're still dealing mostly with kind of structured or semi-structured data. At least it's mainly logs and information coming from different components, which in an, in that sense are perhaps one would say easier to process than truly kind of unstructured video data and analyzing that information. But there is a kind of a very big need to be able to process it very quickly as well, so they get the most benefit out of it. So I kind of see it also as an evolution of what we've been doing with the mediation portfolio, which is kind of collecting data from network elements. Well, I usually put it very simply: the main cause is to make billable CDRs, so you want to be able to collect the information on the calls being made, and to refine that data into being something that you can use. Uh, we are sometimes talking about kind of data refineries in, in this context. So I think the same applies to the Internet of Things as a larger entity. So you want to be able to build systems that can do a lot of this processing 
And kind of one of my other topics that I like to talk about is kind of real-time analytics, even real-time machine learning algorithms. So now that you actually have a huge amount of streams of data, and sometimes it, it's, of course, you want to be able to store it. And the basic big data context, you might have a data lake, if, if, if that's a term some, some like to use, like a huge instance for storing data. But you also want to be able to make decisions while that data is coming in, and being able to make kind of real-time decision making on that information that is flowing. So it's, it's in my opinion, it's causing a lot of uh, helping drive the requirement space in terms of what we need to be able to do, and how fast we need to be able to do it, really make this whole process very efficient. Because I think one of the kind of good use cases in the Internet of Things world is also finding finding faults on components, so, which is something we've also been doing here at Comptel thinking faults on network elements, but it's applicable to a huge variety of different types of devices. So, so you're looking at all the components there, seeing the data coming in, you have your kind of monitoring aspects, you have your data collection, you want to be able to improve the processes overall, but you also want to be able to react in essentially real time to something that there's something that looks like, okay, now this component is going to break down, what should we do? And then be able to kind of build it all together to make one solution. Okay. Um, now you've talked about uh, data mediation and uh, and the, the fact that Comptel has a you know a history there, and I think that uh, you know mediation is is a term that's fairly familiar in the industry. Um, you know, how would you say that kind of the traditional data collection mediation systems are, are that telecom operators are familiar with um, are different from what they need if they really start getting into real time analytics, uh, you know, big data. Uh, you know, and, and kind of the evolution that we're going through in terms of some of these supporting technologies. I think that's a, that's a very good question. So, so basically, I think well, one of the things first, and okay, my own background is not in the telecom space that much. So, so when I was familiarizing myself with the mediation, how it works, some of the key things that I took away from that is that it's really kind of designed not to lose data, but kind of be very precise in this, which is something we don't always see if you're coming from a more um, big data BI background, sometimes if you have, let's say, a few hundred billion rows of data, it doesn't really matter if you drop a few here and there, because you're going to get most of it in. So that's, I think, one of the kind of usual differences if you see on how you want to process data. But then again, I think it's also a value of the mediation. So I see it as an evolution of mediation to kind of be coming more into this space. So I don't necessarily see it as in any kind of way being conflicting or kind of a, not necessarily even different solutions. I personally see it kind of as an evolution of, of mediation because they are kind of very tried and tested technologies, at least from our, our side, what we do at Comptel. So I think I would honestly say that's a very reliable solution for getting the data in. So what we're also doing is kind of expanding the scope of mediation as it is, kind of be able to cover different types of data, different types of technologies, even more data being brought in through mediation. So I, I think. From that perspective, kind of with the big data background and, and that, that kind of frame of reference, I think mediation also has to evolve to be able to meet these needs. So, so you have to have a very scalable platform for processing data and be able to kind of, yeah, essentially just grow into what the data volumes are nowadays because it's, it's hugely expanding all the time and we need to be kind of, we need to match that requirements. Now, I've noticed that in some of Comptel's white papers, publications, um, they talk about data orchestration. And I'm wondering, you know, how would you differentiate or, or define, uh, you know, data mediation versus data orchestration? Yeah, this, to be honest, this might be a bit of my own view on the topic, but I think if you look at mediation, you're kind of narrowing it down into having a stream of data coming in, essentially you're correlating data, you're aggregating data, you're doing some processing on the data, but it's kind of a bit of a, a simpler concept in the sense that you just basically, you essentially configure a stream of mediation to process data in a certain way, which will give you the kind of benefits and values you want to do with that data. But when you're talking about data orchestration, you're talking about a wider concept. You want to understand kind of the whole things, what, where do you want to get the data from, how do you want to combine these information sources? I think that's one of the biggest things that we, we're seeing nowadays even more of. Um, and then what you want to do with the data. Because also, I think we need to be quite, quite kind of aware of the fact that a lot of good information is available also from different sources that don't come from within the kind of, a, whether that be the operator or any kind of industry's own data feeds. 
So you have all of your own information. Then you have things like, let's say, weather data, for example, which is kind of the external source you want to pull in. You have social media information. You have all these kind of internet data sources that you can actually utilize that are publicly available. And if you really want to be able to kind of understand everything that is happening, you want to use as much information as you possibly can to make those decisions. So, so when, you, when I at least talk about data orchestration, I tend to think of it as how can we get all of this information and kind of really make that best possible some decisions and drive actions out of it. Because I think another key concept is that when we're talking about, for example, mediation, it's it's kind of fun. it's a very important component, but when you can really make value out of your data, it's when you actually combine this with other steps in the process. So we at Compto sometimes talk about event analysis and action as a kind of triangle or even a circle where you can go around this topics that you want to get the information in, you want to be able to utilize analytics to do essentially get value out of that information, but then you want to drive the actions to really do something about it. Whether that be kind of in a marketing use case, you want to drive an action to a subscriber, or in a kind of more technical use case, you want to send either people to repair a solution or kind of give more bandwidth somewhere, reroute some network connections. You want to actually do something to improve upon with this information, improve upon the way you're doing your business, and, and that's where the real value comes in. Okay, great. Um, now, there, there was a recent white paper that uh, that Comptel sponsored, um, and uh, there was a quote out of that that I thought was was interesting. <coughs> uh, there has always been a data chasm between the customer and the network, the OSS and the BSS. Traditionally, the only data link between the customer and the network has been the uh, you know, CDR or the data records uh, used for billing. Um, however, there is much more uh, customer and network data that, when applied to correlated event data, can be used to identify quality of service issues, understand trend propensity, track products, support sales efforts, make customer care more responsive, and improve the overall customer experience. So, you know, a lot of very valuable, you know, potential use cases for communication service providers. Um, so, I'm wondering, how do you see service providers trying to kind of bridge that that data chasm? Uh, you know, and, and make more use of this data. You know, you, you just talked about, uh, you know, being able to implement and, uh, you know, and, and draw in many different sources of data. You know, how do you see them them doing this? Um, you know, how well are they doing? Are you seeing any interesting use cases? Um, you know, just kind of maybe your perspective on, on where we are in actually uh, being able to, to see this in the real world. Yeah, I think that's a that's a very good topic. Again, thanks, <laughs> thanks for bringing that up. I I think well, if you look at it, take a, well, look at back back a little. It's been kind of um, well, sometimes even talking about bet maybe about silos. It's not really the prettiest word to use, but in, in practice, uh, let's be honest. So it's been a bit like that. So there's the network part. You're driving your network, making sure it works properly. You're getting a lot of data on the technical KPIs and, and information that's flowing in that network. And then on the other side, there's this kind of commercially oriented marketing and, and kind of selling products to your customers, bringing in the revenue side. And, and to be honest, both are hugely important and both have a huge amount of data that they're collecting and they're utilizing. And I, I think really when you merge these two sides is where you get really kind of interesting use cases. So, so just some examples is when you're looking at kind of network faults, and as kind of like from the network perspective first, so you see that there's a network fault, you have KPIs, you know that there's downtime, there are certain things that you can actually see. How do you really link the true kind of subscriber, kind of how they feel that about that, how much is that affecting their true perceived quality of the service in the end? So that's actually a much more difficult problem, which I've been talking about with many, many operators as well. So it's not by far not kind of a solved problem in that sense. When you are able to merge these data sources and kind of see, just as a simple example, maybe the calls being made from these cell towers, let's say we have a problem in a certain location, where you know, the people are passing by. There used to be a spot just outside of our office, actually, on this bridge that you'd always get the dropped call, which is really annoying. But then kind of how, how does the operator in question really understand what the kind of problem, how much is it costing them, or how much is it causing inconvenience to their subscribers? If they're just looking at the kind of KPIs, okay, we're dropping some calls. But if you then combine the information on myself and other people actually driving through that spot, how we've been using our devices in the long run, what our profiles are, how we're utilizing information, and what kind of revenue we're generating to operator, then when you merge this information, you can actually calculate 
monetary cost or true loss of, of money to the not just the kind of cost that have been not being completed, but also linking that to churn, for example, which I would say is kind of like the ultimate form of dissatisfaction for, for customers that they were <laughs> when you actually stop using the operator's services. Being able to bundle all these things by, by seeing what's going on. And then also on the other side, when we're looking at from the side of the kind of uh, marketing oriented use cases, what we're seeing now is you're actually taking information on, from the network side. For example, a simple case might be the location of the subscriber at that time. So having the essentially information of where they are, where they're going, what's kind of, uh, what is the situation, the context of the subscriber at that time, and then being able to better direct the activities to improve the customer service quality or, or even make new offers or new services in a very dynamic way. So I think that's the kind of a really truly very, very big and useful data source for operators to combine this information and essentially kind of <laughs> break down the silos, if you will, and really be able to use the data. It's a part of the whole big data concept. We're talking a lot about the kind of being able to utilize information across borders. And I think that sounds different. I've been kind of very fortunate to be actually and I'm kind of really enjoying the fact that I'm seeing meetings now where we have people from both sides present in the same situation. We're actually discussing a use case that can help both sides of the operator. And then I'm seeing, in my opinion, that's kind of my personal experience. I'm seeing a lot more of this cooperation happening. But it's still kind of something that's growing, to be honest. So there, there are operators which will, I think, at least knowing in their, in their own hearts that they have a better few issues around this topic because they're focusing on different objectives. But it's going there, and it's a very good thing that's happening. And I think it's one of the key kind of things that operators need to do more to be truly competitive when we kind of look forward in the future, where we have all these kind of over-the-top services being kind of potentially even challenging some of the revenues and income of the operators. So really utilize all of your own information in the best possible way, and that's going to get you a long way. Let them pull in a little bit of additional data from, from public sources, and I think. Yeah. I had some very interesting discussions a while back with some operators uh, about kind of how they've actually implemented this in a kind of big data ecosystem. So they had a, actually they had a relational database as well as a kind of a Hadoop unstructured data storage. We're pulling in a lot of information starting from network probes onto external data sources and kind of consumer data all being bundled into us one platform where you can actually truly utilize this. I was saying, now that sounds like the way you're supposed to be doing this. It's, it's really kind of... It's the way we're going. Okay, great. Well, you know, one more question to just to kind of draw this conversation back to to IoT specifically. Um, you know, um, you you just talked about some uh, some really interesting examples in terms of both you know the marketing side and also uh, you know the network side. Um, do you see opportunities for IoT in both of those areas? You know, I feel like sometimes we see IoT as um, you know, very consumer focused and, you know, something where, you know, we might be getting data from, uh, you know, wearables and fitness things and, uh, you know, but there there are a lot of other devices that will be connected to the network that potentially could give operators more information about their own network as well. And I'm just wondering, you know, if, if you see, uh, you know, how you see IoT playing into to both of those areas. Well, I, I think definitely it's something that applies to both sides. So, so we as the kind of human component on the consumer side, I think the yeah, for well, I have one of these kind of fitness trackers on my wrist right now. It's coming more and more popular, and it's using Bluetooth connections. Kind of well, small example, but still sending data and going to the web service where I can look at what's going on. But the, yeah, also the other side is, is of course this kind of um, enterprise or kind of industrial side of the, the equation. Which I, I think there's, there's also, as mentioned, kind of huge amount of potential there. And for the operators themselves, it's really about being able to find a position in this kind of ecosystem where they're really valuable and then not just basically relaying the information from, from one kind of source to another one, but really, as you said, kind of being able to provide additional value to their own services, their own kind of consumption, but also the kind of potential partners that they might have in this ecosystem. And, and overall, that has with the kind of operator's own data, combining this more technical quality information with the subscriber information. I think in the long run, it's, it's also going to be about that in the Internet of Things approach, where you really kind of see all this data being utilized in a way that that's going to provide not only value to the kind of enterprise side or the operator side, but for us as consumers being able to get better quality of service. We want to use it, so we kind of need that information. 
So it's really hopefully we'll see that continuing to evolve. It's a very very interesting topic. Okay. Great. Well, I've been talking today with Mari Oxella, who is VP of Analytics and Technology at Comptel. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Happy, for having me. It was truly my pleasure. Thank you.